this is nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. This is, they've got goldfish, turtles, minnows, guppies. This is paradise. Me, this is medication, you know? It makes me want to sing. Edelwein, Edelwein. Dance, may you bloom and grow. Bloom and grow forever. You might want to catch the front and see the eagle. The truth is, I get high without taking my medications. Anybody that's addicted to highs doesn't want to give it up. Nobody wants to come down. I don't want to come down. I am still alive! I'd rather f live with my disease than take these damn pills. I've struggled with this bastard disease my whole life. What are you doing up there, Todd? Being me. It's like this big, huge rock that I have to carry, you know? And I don't ask no one to help me carry this rock. I'll carry it my own self. That's beauty. That's an eagle. Woo! I don't have anybody telling me what to do. I don't have to do nothing. I do what Todd wants to do. I control my life. Go, oh, guys! Supper time! I like these seagulls better than I do humans. When he was younger, he was just uh, kind of carefree like any other baby. He didn't start changing until he had to start nursery school at age four. And then he found it a little hard to adjust to other children. He just became overwhelmed easily. Yeah, he was a cute little guy. Yeah, real cute. You know, real playful. And he, he was extremely athletic. He was very active, always wanted to travel because he's kind of a restless boy. And then he was real, real good in sports in high school and that he lived for. He did real well with that up until his sophomore year when he had a real bad race because he fell down. And he fell down and at the state meet, and the coach thought he was on drugs. And of course, it was totally devastating. And then he, all the kids, he wasn't voted captain the next year, and so he quit. So it was very traumatic for him. We're a middle-class working family, and uh, you don't expect these things to happen to your children. And you don't expect it have a child go out in the street and sleep, and that's very hard. I donate plasma, I get social security, and uh, I go to churches and I, I basically ask, you know? And how much do you get for donating plasma? $10, that's it. Okay. And you, you get colds like you wouldn't believe. You get colds, you get sick, you feel drained. Sometimes you feel like you don't want to pass out. You know? But you need money, you know? You need to survive, you know? And if they found out I was mentally ill, they'd cut me off just like that. Come follow me and I'll show you my home. I live right behind the Greyhound bus station. And that's my home. Come on. This is my patio. This is my home, home sweet home. It doesn't bother me. Maybe it bothers my body. My body might break down, but my mind doesn't mind. You know what I mean? What's that over there on the wall? That's, that's feces. It's shit. That's how I mark my territory. What do those marks mean? You're not welcome. They're already, they're already checking us out. We should go. Who's checking us out? That guy did. Let's go. Does he know you're sleeping here? No. 
My freedom is the most meaningful thing of my life. I'm not going to give it up for nobody. You don't understand that I'm at war. This bail, gentlemen. I'm at war. And I'm winning. You see me locked in a nut ward? I am winning.